What's up, Sneaky Nation? Sneaky P here, back with all the news after week one of the preseason in our Tennessee Titans franchise. The Titans did not get a win early on, and you could kind of see where the struggle could come into play this year. You know, we do have a lot of young players that I'm pretty excited about, but we still have a lot of holes to fill. And we need to make sure some of our younger players are going to be able to step up this year. Um, all that said, it might not be the easiest year for us. And I think that was pretty evident uh, through the first week. Next up, we do have the St. Louis Rams. It's another team kind of in a similar situation as us. They have a little more uh, experience on their team. And some of their younger players are really starting to establish themselves as stars in this league. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're definitely a team that I feel capable of beating. Let's go ahead and get to our game prep this week. We do have this for us now. Uh, it's a little bit different right now. And I don't know if that is overall or if that's just going to be for the preseason. But right now, the only thing we can do is earn XP for the whole team. Uh, so it's a little bit different. That's something that hopefully is kind of back to the old school way uh, of Madden 15. I say old school now. Uh, kind of like it was last season where I could definitely focus on a position group and then a player and gain a lot more XP than this mode here. And I, I think that's probably going to be the case and maybe just, you know, it being the preseason and all. You know, in the preseason, you're really focusing on everybody anyway. You know, you're trying to build your team up. You're trying to find the right players to mesh with your group. And I think that might be the uh, case of what this game is doing. So I'm hoping... By the regular season that uh, we can kind of gain more XP as opposed to what we're getting through this drill. Uh, because I definitely think it's going to be important. You know, we need to focus on Marcus Mariota. He is the future of this team. And uh, we need to make sure that we get him experience so we can develop him into the quarterback that we want him to be. We do have some other things to go over here today. You know, we're going to begin our relocation process. Like I said, uh, we will be relocating the Titans. It's nothing against the Titans or Tennessee. Uh, it's just kind of what I do. I like to put my own little spin on things, and that'll be the way of doing it for me. Um, so we'll have to look into that for sure. Uh, the other thing we're going to do from now on, we didn't do this in the first game uh, simply because we had the intro episode, but we're going to start doing the, the game previews in this episode, in the news videos, kind of taking a look at the other team. So... Uh, we'll be going over all that as well. We also have a trade offer for that we're going to have to check out. So we have a lot to get done today, and that's cool. You know, I'm excited. It's a brand new team, uh, and every decision we make here early on is drastically going to change the effect of how this franchise looks moving forward, and that's what I love. I'm so excited to get back into this aspect of it all. Mariota, we didn't get him a whole lot of experience, unfortunately. Um, again, hopefully we can uh, kind of change that in future weeks. For now, that will do, though. Let's go ahead and check out the trade offer we have. Now, we did just sign Brandon Spikes. And because of that, Woodyard went up on the trade block. We do have some offers for him. Let's go ahead and check it out here. Uh, a third-round pick from the Texans. This is not this draft. It's the one after. So we wouldn't even see this pick for two years. A little bit worrisome there. Um, the Saints are offering us a center. Now, we do need a center. It's probably the weakest spot along our offensive line. However, we did take our backup left guard and put him there um, to the point where I think that should be okay. Um, something to think about, though. A fifth-round pick from the Raiders. Eh. Uh, the Patriots, third-round pick. Packers, third. 49ers, third. Dolphins, third. A fifth from the Cowboys this year. That could be a good one there. Uh, and a third from the Colts. So obviously we're probably going to want to take a third round pick. Um, all the thirds being offered to us are not this year. Our choices are between the Texans, the Patriots, the Packers, the 49ers, the Dolphins, and the Colts. I think out of these teams, the, the choices should probably be between the Dolphins, the 49ers, and the Texans. Um... Because in two years, they could be the teams that are kind of struggling. Now, the Dolphins have Tannehill. He's actually starting to become a good quarterback, and he's improving each and every year. So I think we're going to count him out. Kaepernick struggled last year, and this is a team that lost a lot of veteran presence. I definitely think they're going to struggle. Um, that said, they do have Kaepernick, whereas the Texans don't really have a franchise quarterback and finding one is not always an easy task. Now, it is a, a division trade. We're trading within our division. Um, it's not always the wisest thing to do. But if we can get a third-round pick, I definitely feel like that's probably the best bet to go. They do have a very good young defense. But until they get a franchise quarterback, um, that's the move I'm going to make. So we did make that trade there. 
And we'll check out this screen here. Oh, that's cool. It's so adorable. Uh, we do have to cut four players. It's actually probably three now since we just traded a player away without getting anybody back. You can kind of see all the guys on the trade block. You know, Ahmed Brooks is actually a guy I think would be really good on this team. Uh, I think he would fit in well with the Titans. That said, we don't really need an outside linebacker, so that's not really going to affect us a whole lot there. Um, my coach... My owner, Stadium. Okay, here we go. I, I Maybe we do it here. I believe so. Relocate. There we go. Um, are you sure you... Okay. I'll check within a couple... Okay, a couple cities. All right, so we actually cannot choose anything yet. We just are letting them know that we want to relocate. Okay, so we'll have an option again here in a little bit. I guess uh, deciding where to go. Where do you guys want to see the Tennessee Titans go? Let's let's get some suggestions in the comments. Now, I think I have the team, uh, the, the place I want to go. Unfortunately, they did not change anything from the Madden 15 relocation teams. Um, that, that bums me out quite a bit. It really does. You would think they'd put a little bit of time into it, but that does not seem to be the case. That's okay. We still have plenty of good options to choose from. Uh, I'm kind of leaning in one direction. I don't really want to reveal that yet, uh, but let's get some suggestions from you guys. I'd like to see. Keep in mind, we do have to take the market and everything into consideration in owner mode. You know, we need to make a good decision for our team in terms of uh, what's going to help us make the most money. That does play a factor, so uh, keep that in mind when you make some suggestions. But yeah, uh, so we're going to have to cut at least three players here. Let's go ahead and check out our options on players to do so. Uh, we're good at quarterback right now. Andrews is the guy I was kind of planning on keeping, but we do have Cobb here as well. Um, and we're not going to take a penalty for releasing them. So Antonio Andrews, best of luck to you, good sir. And fullback Fowler. Now we are going to have to take a hit here, something I definitely did not really want to do. Um, but we don't need to move forward with two fullbacks, especially when I like Dickerson as he is. Um, Long is another player, Dion Long. Best of luck. We're not going to lose anything in terms of uh, taking a penalty with that cut. Uh, and I feel like that was the way we needed to go. Thompson, uh, we are going to take a penalty, but we can't move forward with four tight ends. And we're going to take a hit regardless of who we release there. Uh, Meredith, you know, I'm going to keep Meredith right now. We'll see if he makes the 53 man uh, when we have to make some more cuts. But a 73 overall, it, that's a good backup to have. You know, if, if something does go down, I would like to kind of hold on to him just in case. Um, Justin McCray, we will make this move as well. Um, we're, we're releasing a little bit more than the three players we needed to, but all these guys are going to have to be cut next weekend anyway. Um, for here, we'll probably release Velasco. And uh, keep the young player in Spain. See if we can develop him into a player that we can work with. Um, and see, this this is a tough call here. Uh, because obviously, the, the worst player on the team, he's a young player. We can definitely work with him. Uh, but I can't really cut him. You know, he's definitely going to be the... Uh, he's getting paid more. He's on that rookie contract. So it'd have to be between one of the other two guys. Now, neither of these guys are starting for us. We have... One of our left tackles playing a right tackle, but it's still something to kind of keep an eye on. Um, defensive tackle, linebacker, anybody else I want to cut this week before we move forward. Don't really want to cut, cut Smallwood here, but honestly, he, he seems like the best option at the moment without taking a penalty. Uh, another cut here. See what we got at cornerback. Got a few options here. Uh, nobody that I really feel like cutting, though. This would be the best option. He's a little bit older and also the worst player, um, unfortunately, for him. And I think... Uh, we're going to hold on to Pruitt for now. Jeez, that contract that Griffin has. Oh, man. That one kind of sucks. That one kind of sucks. I mean, we need him in a backup spot, but that's a lot of money to give to a backup. Um, let's see. We'll check out the transactions. I've already kind of scrolled through. There's no free agents I feel really, really uh, big into. I need to go get that player now. Now, I do think some players are going to be cut throughout the preseason that I am going to want to sign. Uh, we did not see any of those there, but these are some of the trades that have been made. We can kind of check this out. 
uh, going down the list here. Michael Brockers going to the Patriots. That's a great pickup for the Patriots there. Wow. Very, very good move on their part to bring in Brockers. Uh, Luke Wilson getting traded to the Cardinals. Another uh, trade within the division here. Uh, and that trade's possible because, you know, they, they picked up Jimmy Graham now. So the uh, Seahawks did not need to have Wilson anymore. And they traded him to the Cardinals. And that's another weapon for Carson Palmer to work with. That's a pretty good move for both teams there. It's interesting to see it go within the division. And Micah Hyde getting traded to the Dolphins. That's a very interesting move there. Good pickup for the Dolphins. We'll have to see how that plays out uh, as this franchise unfolds. How good of a move that actually ends up being. Um, and again, like I said earlier, we are going to be doing the team previews on this uh, on the news videos now. So we need to go ahead and check out the Rams. See who we will be playing in this uh, second preseason game. Nick Foles leading the way uh, out of Arizona, coming over from the Eagles. It's going to be interesting to see how he does. You know, uh, his first time really getting experience in the NFL, he looked like a great young player. Uh, kind of dealt with some uh, injuries a little bit last year and definitely did not look like the same player. It'll be interesting to see if he rebounds in a new environment. Austin Davis is going to be the backup. Kind of the same story. You know, he looked really good. Uh, when he first got opportunities, a little injury here and there, and it, it kind of took away from uh, his season, unfortunately. Trey Mason going to be the running back. Very interesting. Todd Gurley is going to be the backup. I don't anticipate this being the scenario for very long. Uh, Gurley's the number one running back. I think we all know that, and I think he'll take over Trey Mason here early on. The interesting thing with him being the backup here is that means we're going to see him for three quarters in this preseason game as the backups tend to get the time. So that'll be kind of cool. Corey Harkey going to be the fullback at wide receiver. You have Kenny Britt and Brian Quick, Appalachian State baby, Stedman Bailey, and Tavon Austin, a guy with a lot of speed, but he's never quite lived up to expectations. It'll be interesting to see how he does um, moving forward with this franchise. Jared Cook and Lance Kendricks, two good tight ends. Both have some speed with them. Greg Robinson at left tackle. Roger Saffold at left guard. Center, you have Tim Barnes, right guard, Barrett Jones. Uh, and Garrett Reynolds is going to be the right tackle here. Left end, Chris Long, a very high-profile player. Now, William Hayes is actually a little bit better than Chris Long. Uh, you know, obviously, they, they spend a very high draft pick to get Chris Long, so I wonder if they're trying to move forward with him as the starter to save face a little bit. Uh, at this point, though, William Hayes might be the better option, and he's out of Winston-Salem. Very small college there. Interesting to see that. Robert Quinn, a rising star in the NFL, a sack master. This guy is going to put pressure on the quarterback, and that's difficult for us. You know, we definitely don't want um, Mariota to get hurt early on, but Robert Quinn's a, a threat, somebody to look out for, which brings us to Aaron Donald, the second-year defensive tackle out of Pittsburgh, another great player. Uh, I mean, and then they brought over Nick Fairley as well. So this Rams defensive line is stacked and making moves against this team is not going to be easy to do. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how our our young players kind of respond. Both Mariota, Bishop Sankey, you know, are they going to be able to, to go against this defensive line? Only time will tell. Alec Ogletree going to be the left outside linebacker here. James Laronite is still the middle linebacker out of Ohio State. Bryce Hager. Uh, the rookie from Baylor going to be the backup there. Akeem Ayers from UCLA going to be the right outside linebacker. At cornerback, Janoris Jenkins, a pretty good young player here. And EJ Gaines, the second-year corner out of Missouri, somebody to keep an eye on. Tremaine Johnson going to be the uh, third quarterback uh, cornerback here. And then Brandon McGee from Miami. At free safety, we have Mark Barone, a good pickup here. But they're saying LaMarcus Joyner's better. So I wonder why Joyner's on the bench, even more so McLeod down here. Now, McLeod is by no means a, a, an older player at this point. Um, Joyner uh, is actually the youngest of the group here. But it's kind of interesting. I wonder why McLeod is down here at the third string. It's strong safety. TJ McDonald, a guy I like quite a bit uh, out of UC or out of USC. He's going to be another guy to keep an eye on. Greg Zerline, the kicker. Hecker is going to be the punter. Tavon Austin and Chris Givens, the kick return duo. And then Tavon Austin will be returning punts. Trey Mason will be in the backup role throughout the preseason. Guys, that is going to be it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please smash that like button. And I will see you guys in week two of the preseason as we take on the St. Louis Rams. Later.